Sports Dynasty Podcast with Trevor. And Juan. Um, today, we're going to do something a little different today. Um, if you like WWE, this is the place for you. We're going to be predicting this Sunday's pay-per-view Clash of Champions. And if you don't like it, deal with it and stay in. Just to be nice to us. We need your support. We need your subscriptions, your viewership, and all of your follows. So be wonderful and stay here with us. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, this is actually my first time covering a WWE thing ever. Me too. I used to talk about this with my little brother, Deontay. We, t- we talk about all the other stuff in WWE. And he was saying some outlandish, ridiculous stuff. And I'm like, I'm a type of person now when I watch WWE, I pay attention to detail. And if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm be like, what the fuck is this? This makes no sense. Like, why would you even go this route? Like, But which can we going to discuss in this pay-per-view? Because pay-per-view has a good card, but I don't understand how we got here. But, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. Well, good. Let's just start with the first match. I don't watch 205 Live, so... But I, I do, I so I will discuss this. I'm pretty here. sure that Drew Gulak guy's probably going to win against us. My pick. Um, it's the WWE Cruiserweight Championship triple threat match between Drew Gulak, Humberto Carrillo, and mm-hmm. Lince Dorado. Excuse me if I said his name wrong. But um, I'm going to go with Drew Gulak because he's been a good, on a good roll, a good run the last few months as the champion. Um... Humberto Carrillo is actually really, really, really good. Um, very, very athletic. You know, I, I like I like him. And Lindsay Dorado is like Remus Dario Part 6. So, I don't really know about that. But I'm going with Drew Gulak. He has the momentum, and I think that he's going to um, retain the championship. Okay, that's quick. Next. This is another match that really give a crap about you there. Um, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match between Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Versus Fire and Desire, which is the team of Sonya Deville. Oh, and thank you. I'm like, Sonya Deville. <laughs> Sonya Deville and um, Mandy Rose. Oh, the porn star and Mandy Rose and the other bitch. Got it. I call her porn star. Do you hear a damn theme song? I mean, f- first of all, yeah. first of all, it's funny when Corey Graves just, just goes on this rant saying about when Mandy Rose comes out and just completely just gives her top the entire time. But. This she's match, really hot, she's really, really, she's, hot. she's a really beautiful woman, very, very beautiful woman. If you don't know who she is, um, this match, honestly, no one gives a fuck about. To be no. honest, not not at all. This match is, should be in the pre-show. Um, it's a waste of time, but I'm gonna go. I mean, they're gonna retain. I mean, the WWE retain. Tag Team Champ, Women's Tag Team Champions. The way it's been booked the last few months, like, why even have it? I mean, I get it. You want to give the women something to do, but this is not how you're supposed to do it. The Women's Tag Team Champions is a joke. It hasn't been. No momentum whatsoever. Yeah, since WrestleMania. Yeah, ever since you took the titles over Sasha Banks and Bailey and gave it to um, the Iconics. The Iconics. As you should have wanted to me because they are an actual team, but they did nothing. They became they were, jokes just like the Iconics are. Like, so it was like whatever. So yeah. I guess you give it to Fire and Desire just because like something different, something different. But then again, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross just got it and. They're actually doing something with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So. Yeah, she's a baby face now. Alexa Bliss is a baby face. I don't like it. I don't like it. She's not a baby face to me. I don't like it. I think she's better off as a, as a heel. She's funny as crap as a heel. And she yeah. cuts the greatest promos when she's heel. She's very, she's very... She's been proved from NXT. And Nikki Cross, I don't know what direction they're trying to do with her. Like, it's only a matter of time before Nikki Cross... And Alexa Bliss just turning each other. It's only a matter of time. Nikki Cross should have been like a lowered version of like Bray Wyatt's fiend character. She should have been a crazy, psychotic, yeah. crazy woman beating the crap out of others. That's what she's supposed to be. I mean, like that's what she kind of was in Sanity, right? And yeah. Think, so like she should have came in a different. Which thing. WWE really screwed up with Sanity. They really. No, screwed we can, up. If we want to talk about NXT screwed up, we'll be here for another six hours. So yeah, not it's not going there. Yeah, it's uh, that's a whole different um, episode we gonna we can do. Um, I'm gonna go honestly speaking. I don't even care who wins, but if I have to pick, I'll go with Fire and Desire just because it's might as well give who it to right? so, who's the shit. Yeah, it is what it is. now a more I guess illustrious tag, uh, tag team championship match gonna be the New Day versus the Revival for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. I like what I like the pairing with Randy Orton in the Revival and how it it correlates with. You know, Kobe Kingston and the New Day, how they're together. Mm-hmm. I like it because it's like it's something new, and the revival on SmackDown is actually a bit of fresh air because they are very, very underutilized tag team. Dude, they're so and they're, good. They're so good, 
and the fact that it matters how WWE just shits on them is just is laughable and it's embarrassing. Just, it's Vince and the tag team championships. Is that he does not care? Even back in the den, he didn't care. He just let the guys fight and didn't pay much attention to it. The only difference between back then and now is that back then, the um the tag teams back then they stole the show. They was to the point where, even though yeah you have like WrestleMania um seventeen. Yeah, The Rock and Stone Cold was the main event, but the yeah, TLC, uh, TLC stole the show. Like in WrestleMania 16, WrestleMania 16, same thing. same thing. Yeah, The Rock, Triple H, Big Show, Mick Foley was the main event, but the Hardys and the Dudleys and Edge Christian stole the show two years in a row. So it's different time now. He just it just it's just you like lightning in a bottle. But yeah. but honestly speaking, I like this match, the New Day and the Revival. I'm gonna go with the Revival. I think the Revival need the championships more because, like I said, the New Day is a six-time tag team champions. They they accomplish everything. They're going to be in the Hall of Fame so anyway, but the Revival need this more than anything. If you want to start taking them seriously, give it to the Revival. And then... For storyline purposes, yeah, it makes I sense. agree with you. It makes That's, sense. We'll go into more storyline purposes when it comes to the WWE Championship. Spoilers. Yes. But I, I like the Revival too for storyline purposes. As a matter yeah. of fact, when I'm choosing... These type of matches that I actually pay attention to, I'm going with what I want, and then we'll go with what I actually think. Yeah. I'm going to put two different predictions there. So what I want is the revival. What I think is going to be the new day. It depends. I think whatever happens in this match will correlate. Dictate what happens in the WWE Championship, the, right? Yeah. I, I, agree. I agree. But I'm picking the revival to win the championship. That's what I want. That will make the storyline. Yeah, great. it makes it perfect because they're heading they're heading to Fox in, in a few weeks. And I think that, well, we'll get to that later, but it's a good pairing right now. I like the Randy Orton and I like the Revival pairing. The I trio like, versus the trio. I, I like it a lot. I, I think it saves them because it gives them something to do, but yeah. we need to take, take the Revival seriously. So, I'm going with the Revival. And you're going with the New Day, right? Yes, okay. but I want the Revival, though. Okay. I agree with you. My heart agrees, but my brain is like, no, this man an idiot. We're going with freaking okay, the cool. Revival. I mean, um, the uh, New Day. The Intercontinental Championship match I forgot that was happening. between Shinsuke Nakamura and The Miz. The reason why I am very disappointed with the build-up of this match... Just because they didn't build it up? They, well, I was... <laughs> no, because not even that. Because WWE came out with a um, a special on the WWE Network. Um, 20 matches that defines the Intercontinental Championship. At one point in time, the Intercontinental Championship was... If you had back in the day, if you were the Intercontinental Champion, you were the second in line for a big push with the, with the championship, with the main strap, with the WWE Championship. Oh, he, in the nineties, that championship was more prestigious yeah. than the WWE Championship. I agree. When Shawn Michaels and all of them had them belts, and Stone Cold, Owen Hart, like they used to steal everything. Like, like, us, like for instance, the Miz, in my opinion, will go down as one of the greatest Intercontinental Championships ever. The way yeah. when he hoped he had the championship in his hand. He really brings prestige to it because he said he really you, you can tell when his promos when he had the championship on his waist and his on his shoulder, mm-hmm. he really really puts his heart and soul into being Intercontinental Champion, and not a lot of people can do that. I think that they just gave the championship to Nakamura just the because they had no one else to do it just with. Just to hold it, yeah. Just to hold it because Nak- I haven't seen Nakamura on TV in weeks until like some random ass match against a random opponent like it was a, yeah. a jobber from the fucking indie scene and then yeah. wh- Nakamura to me is not much different than El Jobber yeah either. then what then why my thing is this why are y'all pairing him with out of all people Sami Zayn like you, Sami Zayn is paired up with Shisuke Nakamura it's kind of weird like another person Sami Zayn what the fuck who are this another this, jobber it's kind of like you just put these two people in this match just for the hell of it just to give them something to do uh, I'm going with Miz the, the Miz should, should become the champion. At least give the prestige back to over there. Let's give it to the Miz. That's what I think. Let's give it to the Miz. This is going to be the Miz. And then whenever Survivor Series hits up, he'll fight like AJ Styles or something, which should be a good match. Yeah, so I mean, we'll good. see about that. Well, that depends if AJ Styles makes it to Survivor Series as the championship. Which is next, actually. The next match up on the card. Yeah, AJ Styles takes on Cedric Alexander for the United States Championship. Wait, wait. Did you say who, who's going to win the next match? Yeah, the Miz. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm going with AJ Styles. Me too. I think they using Cedric Alexander because like he's a very talented, very talented um young man, very talented young man. But I think they are, this is a stepping stone for a bigger 
matchup in the future with AJ Styles. Um, I'm picking AJ Styles to win this match. I've actually heard that Paul Heyman is gonna actually really push Alexander. Um, I still think AJ Styles is gonna win, but I think Cedric is gonna take it from him. So they actually might see Miz against Cedric Alexander in Survivor Series. Survivor Series should be kind of fire. Cedric Alexander is a really good freaking wrestler. Yeah, it's very different. Very, yeah. very different. But I wouldn't be surprised. But I go AJ Styles just to set up a bigger match between the two, and then Cedric will take it. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that one too. Um, I think they're gonna push him. Like how they kind of push Ricochet, I think yeah. they push him just like that. I think the United States champion. Like, I think honestly speaking, before AJ Styles had the U.S. title, I mean, it's he's doing the best he can to keep it like elevated to some type of respect because mm-hmm. the United States Championship the last five years has been absolutely just berries. Like, I don't even remember who had it before AJ Styles. Who beat him? Ricochet. He beat Ricochet. Oh, before Ricochet then. Who had it? Ricochet beat Samoa Joe. Oh yeah, I forgot. And then Mysterio had it before that. And then Mysterio had it, had it, and he got hurt, which was dumb. What was the point of having him beat um, Samoa Joe just for him to give it up the next day? Just not even just give it up to him. Hey, here you go. You're he literally gave it up. Yeah. It was stupid. That whole thing was dumb, and, and it kind of ruined that type of that feud because that that feud with Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe was just absolutely just horrible. It always the time for everybody. So. Shout out to Adrian Styles for making the United States Championship somewhat something, something at least like that. But um, moving on, the Raw Tag Team Championship match: Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman, the Tag Team Champions, will take on Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. This is tough for me because the people that Braun and Seth Rollins are going against are complete jobber trash. So I have no idea if they're actually going to give them those belts or not. Because I can't see a world where Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins win this match when they're about to fight for the title later. But it's Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. So I don't even know if they're going to give him the belt or not. First of all, I hate this match. I think this match was just thrown together. It's stupid. Now, I like the the tag team turnaround match they had on Raw a few weeks ago. I thought that, that build up for that match was cool. I wasn't expecting Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode to win, so it was not that bad. But you just put... Dolph Ziggler, who was just in a, set, a tag team with um, Drew McIntyre, and he just put Robert Roode, like who was just the champ, the twenty four seven champion, I, like yeah, the Jobber champion. The job, like, even though it's very entertaining, I love that damn. Yeah, I love so, I love the championship too. It's pretty funny, but you have two tag teams that just built together. They just show how bad the tag team of Raw is. Like literally, like the Raw tag team division is absolutely horrendous. Like you have to put. Two random ass people I together. Mean, it's man. terrible. Vince does not care about tag teams. Man. I honestly don't know who's. I'm, I'm gonna pick Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. I am too. Only for the storyline story purposes because I don't see how you can win a tag team match and then later in the nighttime fight each other for the championship anyway. I just don't see how that makes sense. I don't know why, but it just doesn't make sense to me. So, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode will be the Raw Tag Team Champions this Sunday. And, yep, honestly speaking, no one's going to care. No. Speaking of which, this is supposed to be Class of Champions, but apparently we have a random match. Yep, because of Roman Roman. He Roman has to be in the yeah. card. Roman Reigns versus Eric Roman in a no disqualification match. Honestly speaking... You have to let Eric Rowe win this match. Yes, you do. You have to let him win this match. Yes, you because do. Because the storyline, the, the, I'm not going to lie to you that I'm getting tired of the storyline, but for him to go do all that and run over Roman Reigns, do all that, almost kill Roman Reigns and everything, and for all that to happen, and for him to keep beat the shit out of Dave Bryan a few weeks ago, give Eric Rowan the win. If Roman Reigns wins this match, then this whole storyline is pointless. You have to give Eric Rowan the win. If, if, it's not like, even just a win, too. He low key has to beat him up a bit. Yeah, yeah, he has to win and just kick his ass convincingly. Yeah, dominant. Like, like, if that's gonna, how you build up people. But they don't know how to do that shit. But, no, they don't. <laughs> but some hearts are telling me that Roman Reigns is going to win, even though he shouldn't. But I don't know. I, I feel that they're going to mess this up somehow, somewhere. I don't have faith. I don't really care about this match. It's a damn shame about this pay per view is that probably like. 40% of the thing of this match I don't give a shit about. It's like... No. Like, WWE has not done a good job in, in having me invest my time and invest my, you know, me actually caring about it. They have so much talent in this roster and they don't know how to utilize mid-card talent. 
They don't. They don't understand. Seem to understand the fact that the way you bring people up to the main lines for the universal ability we is to make your mid card strong. That's what they used to do back in the day. Back when they had Jericho and uh, Kurt Angle and um, Chris Benoit and all those other dudes, that mid card scene was so strong that they easily moved on to the main uh, scene. Like the end of 2000, who was WWE champion? Kurt Angle. He was just a mid carder earlier that year. You have a strong mid card, you have a strong WWE Championship storyline. Same thing, you have Shawn Michaels in the mid card early 90s, right? He became WWE Champion in the middle. There's your strong champion. You did it with Stone Cold Steve Austin. You did it with The Rock. You did it with Triple H. Why did you get away from that? Your mid card now is so trash. That's why when you have your main champions, they never have any good storylines with people because you don't build anyone up. I don't know how you forget about something so trivial. They do it well in NXT. Your North American Championship is awesome. They give Velveteen Dream kicking ass. You know what I'm saying? Ricochet was doing good with that. Adam Cole, look at Adam Cole now. Adam Cole's a great example. Adam Cole had the championship first, right? Then he went on and beat up on Johnny Gargano and got the championship. And look at him, he's a good champion now, right? Hello, what is wrong with you? I, I just don't understand. <laughs> don't get it. But, yeah, I, Eric Rowan should win this match. But someone telling me he won't. They're going to ride their own rings train again. Eventually, it's only inevitable, but I'm going to go Eric Rowan. It's only be inevitable to start booing him again. Yeah, and they don't want that shit again, so... We'll well, see I'm, I'm going with um, Rowan because they don't have a choice. Yeah, they have to go. They have to go with Eric Rowan. They have to. Anyways, SmackDown Women's Championship match. It's not like you haven't seen this shit before. I don't right. Bailey, the defending SmackDown Women's Champion, will go against the nine-time... Women's champion Charlotte Flair and the 65th title match in her career. Really? Yeah, 65. Oh no, nah, I'm exaggerating, but maybe I'm not exaggerating. If you that way, if you want, you probably not that far off. My I God. feel like I'm not. Like you're not, <laughs> not that far off. At least triple the amount of ring she has at this has title match. So at least like 20 something. At least uh, I don't know, but that's ridiculous. Yeah, they're milking this four horsewoman thing so bad. It's crazy. I'm going to go with Bailey. Me, do I tell you? Yeah, me too. Why? Because apparently on the back that Charlotte has some backstage heat only because her father is suing WWE for the I man. I got nothing to do with her, though. Like, why are you going to take out on her when she, oh, I hate they, 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 they do this all the time. They do this all the time. <sighs> WWE is petty. They, listen, man. They are petty, but that's your best women performer. And that's, the, to me, the greatest women's wrestler ever. My already. issue, my so issue you with... you can't do anything to her. She's untouchable. My issue with... This situation was I. I we're gonna tie in the, the Sasha Banks later because they're technically the next match after this that. This is but, a storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Barely turning heel at that time. It did, to me, it didn't make no sense. I'm like, they wait a minute. Should have been turning. Y'all should have been did this like a year ago, dude. I'm like, Y'all should have been did. <laughs> and my thing is that Charlotte Flair is not. It's not a good baby face. Like I'm. I, I don't like. I'm, she's she's not a good baby face. It's like, like her father. Ric Flair is a better heel. Be trying. Like Charlotte face. is a natural born heel. It's like she gets it from her daddy. But my thing is that I trying to like make it feel like oh the sympathetic type of nope. no it doesn't work. It's kind of like the Miz. The Miz as a babyface sucks. Charlotte He's Flair as a babyface yeah. sucks. And the fact of the matter is that I think Bailey will win the title because obviously the backstage heat with Charlotte Flair. And I think that storyline purposes, it makes sense because you're just giving Charlotte Flair a number title ring for what? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I think Bailey will win this game, win this match only because it is, I don't understand. Like, it, it doesn't give me the. the the reason to care about this I, I, I don't get it like what was the point of turning them heel at that moment you should have done that shit a long time ago uh, they I, should have fought each other it is the, Bailey and Sasha I mean that would, it is what it is. this might turn into it that might be the end of the story and I have to do it right but uh, they had so many opportunities to do that too and they ruined it yes. I'm gonna they ruined it they don't know what they're doing like yo listen just I don't see what was the, and then my thing is Charlotte Flair you got the title shot for what like because there's really nobody else on the Smackdown Women's Division like last the last paper view you Ember, Ember Moon and Bailey in a, ma- in a great match great match the fans were not having that though. but they wasn't having it though it was like yo listen you we know what the deal is you, Ember Moon was only here because she's a bridge to Charlotte and it's like you know even though they shit on Ember Moon for years like she was on the main roster two years and it's ridiculous like 
I just don't like I don't like it at all. It's the same difference with the mid card in the men's division. Like, dude, you don't bring up any of these girls. There's so many good women to fight. But, but my, you bring the same four, the same four horse women, all four of them. But like, my thing is f- that there was no need to split the women's division in two. Like, there was no reason to do it. Like, you could have had one women's one women's division, like all five for one title, and it's like the storylines are fresher. You have fresher matches. But now I'm seeing the same matches every every other. Week. Yeah, I actually agree. Like how many times you see Bailey fight Charlotte Flair? Like so many times over the years. Like it gets repetitive I after a while. That, but right. Bailey will win this match. Miz in this match, and I agree. It will tie into the Raw Women's Championship match. Which is next? Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks. I'm going with Sasha. I'm going with Sasha Banks only because, let's be honest, WWE owes her one. That's exactly why, too. WWE also won. That's probably the only reason why she came back. And I'm also low-key kind of tired of Becky Yeah, Lynch. I'm tired of Becky Lynch, too. Becky Lynch, it was cool. That was You had a good run. Championship long enough. I'm just tired yeah. of... Yeah. She low-key, to me, has been the most stale out of the yeah. three WrestleMania winners. Yes. She's been the most stale I agree 100%. one since she won. But it's like, yeah, the man gimmick is cool, but it's like, okay. And then my thing is that her promos have gotten... Pretty, pretty lackluster or more and more. I've heard back in the day when Dean Ambrose was WWE Champion back 2016. Yeah. I, I watched this YouTube channel called World Culture Wrestling. Oh. And now Cultaholic. And I don't like them anymore. I used to. No, I, but I, I used to like them too, but I, I used to World Culture now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like it. No, I, 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 I think they suck. Yeah. But what they said about Dean Ambrose is I'm going to say about Becky. I think that she's better as a chaser than an yeah, actual champion. I agree. When she was going after those belts, she was by and far the hottest thing. Yeah, in the, the crowd was behind her. Dude, she was so good. Even though when she was heel, she did do good with the SmackDown Championship when she was heel with the one she beat uh, Charlotte for. Yeah. yeah, she actually was good. But she's better as a chaser. When she's going for it, like Stone Cold. Yeah. Same thing with Stone Cold. Stone Cold was a better chaser to me than he is a real championship, too. I agree, but that one too, and it's it's ah oh man. I'm trying to grasp now. I get why they put such a big in this match because I said they owe her, but it shows you how thin both women's divisions are. Yeah. You're showcasing the same four women every single time, somehow, some way, mm-hmm. and it shows how Ronda Rousey was the big draw for you. And, and I, I get it, such a big promo when she came back she said oh I attacked Natalia because I was angry and how I got shitted over for losing to two bums like the Iconics while I while they was in main event in Wrestlemania even though that Wrestlemania main event disappointed it, it, was, wasn't shit. it, it, wasn't, it wasn't shit and parts had part that had to do with Becky Lynch I think Becky Lynch really messed up in that match too but I'm tired of seeing Becky now it's time for them to give the title back to Sasha Banks so we could have this tandem of heel Sasha and heel Bailey. Bailey. That's what I think is gonna happen. Right. I got a whole rant for later on. I'm gonna say after we finish. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a rant. Yeah. I'll go through it later. Um, All right, let's move on. We're the, almost done. The WWE Championship match: Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton. I'm going Randy Orton for probably a different reason. Randy Orton, even though he'll be a 14-time champion, Randy. Jesus Christ. Randy Orton doesn't need this match to win the match, but you have to give it to him. I think the Kofi Kingston reign ran his course. We are happy that he was able to get himself to that upper echelon in the main event scene. And, you know, he did a pretty good job with the WWE Championship. But now that the SmackDown's going to Fox, they need, they want Randy Orton as a champion. I think they're going to segue into that. Ooh, they're going to talk something about something interesting right now. All right. I think Kofi's fine. I actually do like him, and he still has that little baby face edge that the others don't. Like, he's a way better baby face than Seth Rollins is. Everybody's... Yeah, I yeah. Could, I could, So, I, I, don't, I don't think he's stale. I just think he needs to go ahead and give it up for a little while. We need something called the transitional champion. So, let Randy Orton take it for a month or two, and then he can win right back, and he'll get his flame back. Like, look what happened with Seth Rollins, for example. Yeah. He, they, were, he, they were tired of him, then Brock Lesnar cashed and took it. The minute he beat up on Brock Lesnar, he got all his fame back. I think Kofi needs that. He gets that, I think he'll, he'll be right back Honestly, where he is. I the difference between that is that Universal Championship thing with Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar, how they push it back and forth, to me was pointless. I'm like, what was it? It was pointless. It was stupid. But like, it did help him, though. It, yeah, honestly speaking, that was WWE's fault. It was. Why? But no we'll, get to, we'll get to that second. We'll get to that in a minute because yeah, 
they tried to force Becky and Seth together. It was like, there's no need. Stupid, it was thing, a stupid thing. I think Randy Orton wins because, like I said, they need, you know, a change. I think, yeah. even though Randy Orton as world champion the last few years has been, been boring, a little bit boring, <laughs> let's be I'll honest. Randy but Randy Orton is the man, man. Randy Orton. He could still get in the people's skin. I I like the tandem of... Oh, yeah. Heel Orton is nothing like yeah, that. Yeah. Man. I mean, Heel Orton in 2009, that was... Oh, nothing beats that. Nah, that was crazy. I think only, like, maybe Triple H in 2000, 2001 was yeah, worse than that. That he was used crazy. To, like, break people with sledgehammers and, you know, fuck the boss's daughter and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Nothing's worse than that to me, but Randy Orton in 2009 was close. I don't like Randy I hate when Randy Orton's a face. I hate it. I, I think it's fucking... He's hard. a natural heel, too. He's like he, he's such, he's, he's such He's the asshole. He's one of fucking... Punch in the face, yeah, that's but what he is. he'll kick her ass probably after, right after you do it. But um, he's a natural heel. Yeah, no question. like I think Randy Orton and the revival pairing, they'll have the championship. They'll have I'm championship. I'll be fine with that too. But yeah, let Randy Orton hold it for a little while. before they go to Fox? Because like I said, Fox is going to they want to, like a like a how you say a familiar face. Because now nah, here we go. Here's what I'm gonna say. Randy Orton wins it, right? You know how this is gonna wind up being champion. Who? Brock Lesnar. Well, I think there's a draft coming up. Remember that? Oh, yeah, you're right. I think Brock Lesnar's going to go to SmackDown. Well, it's Fox. Fox is a UFC place, right? Uh, Who was the former UFC champion? Yeah. I think they're going to give first him the Fox, he's going to take championship. I right? think Fox probably said, listen, we want Brock, and if we, if we, if we can get Ronda, we, exactly. we want her too. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I think he's going to go and win the WWE championship. Credit to my brother. He's the one that said this. Uh, I think he said this is like May, that Brock Lesnar's going to go to SmackDown when yeah. he beat Kofi for the championship. Maybe he could just be Randy Orton instead. But I think Brock Lesnar, I give it by November, he's going to be champion. That's fair. I mean, like... We yeah. might have a Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar part three. But I, I believe it won't be for a championship, though. I hope they don't do that. Me neither. That, 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 um, that Survivor Series, um... That Survivor Series, the, um... The, the, the I don't competition? Like, I don't like it. I don't like it. it. It was cool the first year, and then after a while... It was all right it. last year. Some matches were good. Like, yeah. Seth Rollins and um, Sinsuke, that match was fine. Yeah, that was, that was a great match. Yeah. But we, but I'm, the first year was elite. Yeah, yeah, we would go Randy Orton right. to win this match. Yeah. So let's finish it. And then the final match is the Universal Championship match between Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman. It's no brainer to me that Seth Rollins win this match. Huh? It's no brainer to me that Seth Rollins win. Of this course. Match. Yeah. Like if no you what you wasn't gonna if you wasn't gonna put the championship on Braun Strowman years ago, you're not gonna do it now. Yeah. Like the crowd doesn't give a fuck about him anymore. Like y'all ruined y'all ruined Braun Strowman. Twenty seventeen like, was his year. Yeah. Like, he was hot at the time. Yo, put the title on him. You don't want to put the title on him. I was too afraid to put the title on him. Seth Rollins now, and now we were talking about the Universal Championship earlier. My issue with how the Universal Championship in book was like, what was the point of having Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania just to have him lose it to Brock to get it back from him again? I think it was for a reset because they booked him so bad between WrestleMania and whatever pay-per-view and, that, and it, that they needed to reset his character and everything. And plus, they didn't work at first. Well, one, Seth Rollins over to the fans was the fact that he put on a stellar match with Brock Lesnar. Not not the storyline, the match itself, which is Seth Rollins' MO. His character isn't all that, but he's, to me, the best in-ring performer out of everyone, and that's what, why he's the man, because of his in-ring performance. I think the fact of the matter is, is that I was telling my brother this, too. I think that they like, the fans like Seth Rollins, so they want to give him the ball. You know how they say, oh, the Roman Reigns is the guy? Yeah. Maybe they're using Seth saying, no, we're trying to pull away from Roman Reigns for a little bit because maybe, I really think they're trying to say, you know what, no, Seth Rollins is the guy. Technically, he's on the I guy. think Triple H is the one telling everybody. Yeah, saying he's that's, the guy. That's Triple H's favorite guy. Yeah, of course. Like, when he was the champion the first time, when he was WWE champion in 2015. Was that was funny. It was, it was he was, I can't even blame him because it's like, yo, the way that they booked him as a cowardly heel, was like, ugh, like. That doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work, it, it doesn't work anymore. Like, it's, we, people are tired of seeing that. But, you know, I'm going to go with Seth Rollins doing this match because, like, I don't know why they put this match together anyway. I don't even know how this is going to work. I, we really haven't seen Seth Rollins going against a big guy like this before. So, I don't know how they're going to make this work. But, I guess we'll find out. Well, we'll, we'll see. But All right. So, now. That's the card for... Yeah. What I have to say real quick. It won't take that long. Why does WWE insist of having champions hold the belt for like a year? What's the point of that? Back in the quote-unquote glory days of the, the Attitude Era, who did that? No one. It was different back then because they was competing with WCW. And the Attitude Era, everyone was hot. Everyone was over. Everyone was hot. So it was like, okay, cool. 
I get to, the Rock could be champion for like two months and he could get back to Triple H. Oh hey, it's Mankind. Mankind's pretty hot too. It, but that like you were able to alternate, alternate, and the fans would eat it up. So then why not do that now? I know that no one's built up, but how else are they gonna build up? So you don't care about the mid card anymore. So why don't you give some of these guys a chance? And again, like Braun Strowman in 2017, they won the Rock Lesnar to break CM Punk's record. That's the reason why they kept it to me. Of course, to me. obviously, yeah. this gets CM Punk's name off the record books. Braun Strowman was the hottest dude by and far too in wrestling at that point. They should have gave it to him for just like two months, cause I know they won a Reigns versus Brock Lesnar really bad that WrestleMania. So you easily could have had Braun Strowman hold the belt for like a, even just a month, a month or two, then give it back to Brock Lesnar and then let them fight WrestleMania. Everybody would have been fine with that. That is so much better than what actually happened. Why be afraid? Listen to the crowd. I understand the crowd's not always right yeah. because they're retarded. I'm sorry. These, these WWE fans are stupid as hell. They don't know what the hell they want one minute to the next. But at the same time, most of the time, that will get you more of a reaction if you just put your ear out for a minute. So why not switch it over? I'm fine with like certain people. Like another example, AJ Styles' latest WWE title run was so damn stale to me. I didn't like it at all. Like Samoa Joseph took the belt for like a month. That would have been fire. Well, they shit on Samoa Joe like really. Bad. That's what I'm saying. My thing was this: like when you knew he was gonna be in the title match, my like, yo, we don't, we don't even care because you don't take it seriously. You're not gonna win anyway. Yeah. Like, you just there. Like the WWE Championship, the last I'm gonna say three years, the way they have booked the WWE Championship is absolutely should be a, it's a crime, a travesty. This has 51, 52 years of 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 lineage. That was that was your uh, that was the main title, and y'all have treated it like 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 a secondary title. It's, it's embarrassing, like it's really embarrassing. Like, how when when the last time you seen the WWE Championship in the main event of a pay per view? Seriously, when the last time you seen it? From my from remember, that's a long goddamn time. Before the Universal Championship existed. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, because you that's know, going on Vince three, on, Raw. It's going on three years. Like the way, first of all. Jinder Mahal was the WWE champion. They gave him a chance when he was hot shit. Hot dog shit. What? But they don't want to give Braun Strowman a championship. It makes what, no sense bro? to me. What? It makes no sense to me. It's like, so why? Samoa Joe, Finn Balor. No, fuck all those guys. Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal. I just don't personally get it. The super jobber extraordinaire, Jinder Mahal. First of all, Bray Wyatt's WWE title ring was very, very underwhelming in my opinion. I think they've First of all, they messed it up because I was so happy when he won that Lewis Chamber. First of all, I think when AJ Styles lost to John Cena at the Royal Rumble, I want to say it was 26, 2017. 17. Yeah, 2017. I wasn't a fan of John Cena beating him there. I'm Me like, either. what was the point? You just gave him the title for like two weeks and then Bray Wyatt won. Yeah, I didn't understand. You should have had Bray Wyatt win the Royal Rumble if you want to do that. If you hit the win the Royal Rumble or whatever, and then let AJ Styles just. Hold this shit to WrestleMania. It didn't, make, it didn't make no sense to me to do that. Like, Bray Wyatt ended up having a really boring match at WrestleMania with Randy Orton. Which at was, least they re reconstructed him because this Fiend thing is kind of awesome. It's pretty cool, yeah. But it's pretty cool there. Which, which they, I'm kind of afraid because they, I think they're pushing him too hard already. I heard he might have a championship match soon, and that's not good. I'm not really it's too early. It's too early. I'm not happy about that either because it's too early. You can't. Have him lose because he's he's on fire right now. If you want to do this right, you can't have him lose. No, he can't have a title match for a long time. At least WrestleMania, and maybe not, a little after that. Maybe maybe maybe, we, maybe the Royal Rumble or something yeah. like that. But like I they, don't they know. did the same thing with Drew McIntyre. They 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 did the opposite actually. They waited too long, and now he's like the most stale bastard ever. He was hot when he came in. Yeah. So that was the person you should have gave him a title shot from like damn near the beginning because he was hot. Mm. It's like they, Vince does not watch NXT, huh? He doesn't. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, the King of the Ring final was supposed to be on this card, but they, they, they took it off. Their excuse was, oh, we already have 12 matches. We don't need 13 matches. I do not take that shit. And I'm like, what type of stupid shit is that? Your pay-per-view be going, sometimes be going over four, four and a half hours. What does this make any difference? Even though the King of the Rings is going to be Baron Corbin versus Chad Gable on Raw Monday night. And obviously Baron Corbin's gonna win. Yes, he is. Because it's like, why the fuck not? It's like, you want a heel. He want you want a heel king. Even though, it, I don't know what the incentive is. If you win the king of the ring, what's gonna happen? What are you gonna get? What do you get? I don't. I don't fucking know what you're gonna get. I'm sick of Baron Corbin. 
Because they never know what to do with them. One minute they're gonna push him, next minute take it away. Next minute they're gonna push him, next minute they're gonna take it away. My brother, I'm sick of him. My brother Deontay absolutely hates Baron Corbin. He hates him like to the point where, where it's where we, we if I mention him in front of him, he says no, don't say Baron Corbin, say Baron Corbin, because he just hates him so much. He thinks that he's a dick. So that means he's doing his job. I think he's doing a great job as a heel. He's, Fucking look like a fucking Applebee's look, waiter. We're gonna have to stop this because I have more things to say, and we're gonna be here for another six yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, for a year. So, we're so. End this out. maybe we'll do an extra podcast this week or something because wrestling. Yeah, maybe. that's pretty cool. Yeah, but um, anyway, check out Clash of Champions on this Sunday. Yeah, we won't be watching. We'll be well. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we can't say that. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we we could. We're, no, we're gonna watch it the next day. Yeah, because but, we're gonna be. Yeah. Dreaming. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, um, so um, have a good night, guys, and yeah, um, be check safe. Us, check out our social media. Our Twitter handle should be in the description. Check out our Facebook page. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. We love you. You guys have a great night. Support the podcast, please.